Hi Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I am going to be doing your September 2020 money and career reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload new videos, and I upload all the time, just hit the bell notification button. And if you're interested in any of the decks that I use, they are all listed in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let's clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from your body, like storm clouds. Feeling yourself become calm, centered, and at peace as you enter into this safe and loving space. All right, let's see what the tarot has to say. Aquarius, September 2020, money and career, Aquarius, September 2020, money and career, Aquarius, September 2020, money and career, Aquarius, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly, guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides, angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly, guide this reading. And show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly, guide this reading. And show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic, and one bonus card right here. Wonderful. All right. And let's see what your chakra energy is for this time. Aquarius. September 2020. Money and career. Aquarius. September 2020. Money and career. Aquarius. September 2020. Money and career. Aquarius. Angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly, guide this reading, and show me clearly angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. All right. So we have here, we have spiritual awakening. There is a sense of greater power around you. Your crown chakra is opening to the power of the universe, to the power of your angels and your spirit guides, and you find yourself in a spiritual awakening. You find yourself feeling things much more deeply, much more honestly, much more profoundly. And this is awakening you, awakening you to the knowledge around you, to the power around you that is guiding you forward. And then we have life purpose. And this is the third chakra. And what's so beautiful, I, I kind of laugh because the spiritual awakening is leading to the life purpose because we always think that our life purpose should be something flashy and showy, should be something that everybody oohs and ahs over. But a lot of times it isn't. Our life purpose can be kindness. Our life purpose, our life purpose can be compassion. Our life purpose can be honor of soul and of self. And these can be things that people aren't really that impressed with. But when they have the focus of that caring, you know, on them, when they have the focus of the compassion of this world, of your world, on them, it becomes something very mean meaningful. And so what people laugh at and think is worthless, you're going to find is very useful. And Aquarius, for you, you connect with this world in such a profound and enlightened way. You are represented by the star in the major arcana. 
Okay, the star is the highest form of man's perfection. The star is inspiration and wishes. The star is what we desire. And so here, what your life purpose, it's what most people desire in the inner depths of themselves, but think is weakness to be able to show. So you might find that it is very kind of combative to be able to walk your purpose, to walk your truth, but it is also very need needful. Meaningful is what spirit wants me to say, but it's also very needful and it's also very meaningful. That's it for you to move forward. And you're going to find that your life purpose excels you, elevates you, and brings you to a higher place than you ever thought possible. And it comes from your words, from the truth that you live and the power that you have. It leads you then to visualization. Now visualization is, is dreaming, but to the next level. So it's daydreaming, it's dreaming at night. Visualization is taking your dreams and not seeing them as a maybe, as a cross your fingers and hope for it, but as a power and as a truth, as a, I can feel myself in this situation. I can feel myself moving forward. I can feel myself empowered and emboldened and blessed. And as you feel this, you become more and more you. As you visualize yourself stepping out of your, self, your comfort zone, as you visualize yourself stepping into your life purpose, no matter how small or meaningless you think it is, divinity knows its power. And you see yourself opening doors that once felt barred, not just locked, but barred, absolutely kept from you. And you're going to see yourself walking further and further into what has been dreamt, what has been desired by your heart, your soul, and yourself. And you're going to feel your third eye opening in a way that, yes, can be overwhelming, but in a way that is absolutely profound and beautiful. Now, the left-hand side, this is your inner self. The right-hand side, which is right here, is your heart, your, no, this is your heart, your dreams, and your wishes. This is your emotional self. And the right-hand side, there we go, is your public self. And then we have your bonus card. So your public self, your emotional self, and your inner self. So let's see what your left-hand side has to say. We have the five of wands. There's a battle here. We have the messenger of air and Aquarius, you are an air sign energy, all right? And here you are a warrior. You are going to act very quickly onto things and you're going to be pushing yourself forward. This is also saying, don't, don't be rash because you're going to find yourself wanting to be rash. But this is kind of like step back, think things through. But when it comes to banishing the doubts, the fears, and the chaos within, you're going to find yourself needing to act right away, or else you're going to see that you kind of lose the courage just a bit. Justice, a balancing of justice within, of what you desire, of what you want, of the way that you are moving forward. It's also a balance of ideals and ideas. And then you have 11 counting down to 10, the wheel of fortune. Things are changing for you. And as things are changing, you can find it to be very overwhelming because it feels like your life is a, a Ferris wheel. You know, it is a roller coaster. You know, you're going round and round and round. You might feel like you're not getting anywhere. And then all of a sudden it just picks up and it has these lefts, these rights, these up, these downs. And you think, oh my goodness, how do I move forward? You know, how do I get to where it is that I want to be without all this derailing? And without all these twists and these turns, the twists and the turns are important because there's a new season of your life being started. You have the seven of earth, the seven of pentacles. This is telling you to be patient, be patient and be kind with yourself as you are being patient. You then are followed by the seven of fire, which is choosing your battles wisely. Do not fight with everyone who comes in opposition of you. And do not feel as if you have to defend your heart. Your heart's business is nobody's business but your own. This is saying you choose your, your battles wisely and you do not give your energy to fools. Then you have the messenger of water. This is water sign energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. You are going to find that the biggest messages come to you from the smallest sources. And then you have the four of earth. This is my vampiric energy card. The four of earth for me for always is this vampiric energy. It's you feel like you have to hold on. It's also reminding you to ground yourself, to guard yourself because people try to steal away blessings. They just do. And it is people who think that the world doesn't have enough blessings for them. They undersell themselves. And that is a lot of people in this world. So here with the four of earth, you're finding 
your life changing with the Wheel of Fortune from this vampiric energy, and you step into in the public arena. You have this transformation right here. This is the death card. This is a, way, a dying away of the old self, a rebirth of the new. This is a Scorpio energy, a time frame, October 23rd to November 21st. It leads you to the Six of Waters. It leads you to a stepping out of the past and not having the past be the defining factor of your present. And it leads you to love. The repeat of the number six, this is the most caring, the most nurturing of the numbers. And this is a sense of nurturing and caring about what you love, about what you desire. This is an air sign energy. Gemini is a time frame of May 21st to June 20th. This is a duality, a purpose. This is a love of what you desire from your life, but also what you crave within your soul. And it leads you to the Eight of Waters. The Eight of Waters is an end. It is an end. It's a walking away of something you once thought you would love. And for you, Aquarius, this something has been draining you dry. It has been. Now, the Eight of Water is as profound an ending as a divorce, meaning it's not something to muck around with. It isn't something to be taken lightly. It is something that is quite profound for you. So even if other people laugh, even if other people sit there and say, oh, Aquarius, you're just making a big deal out of nothing. You're not. You're not. You are really taking in what's important to you, and you are making a very soul-wrenching decision to move forward. And the way I always see the Eight of Waters, and if you've and if you're, you've been following me for some time, you know this, or you know even for a little bit of time, the Eight of Waters for me is that really nice pair of shoes that you get, and you think, oh my gosh, they look so pretty, I have to have them, and you wear them, and you can't walk with them. So what the heck point is the shoes? Now, I once had a closet full of shoes like this, shoes that were not meant for walking. They were just pretty. And that's silly and also a waste of money. The Eight of Waters is about an adventure. It's about a discovery. It's about walking away from what keeps you from discovering your life and living your adventure, from moving forward in your power. And that's what shoes are for, right? They're to guide you. They're to protect you as you're on your journey. And that's what you're going to see here. Anything that keeps you from the joy and the blessing within your soul is something that you need to purge from yourself. And then it leads you here. Oh, goodness. To the chariot. And I like that you have the eight thing counting down into the seven. And this is a cancer energy, a time frame of June 21st to July 22nd. And this is the power of your heart. Aquarius, first and foremost, nobody can tell you how to love, okay? But nobody can tell a Cancer how to love either. And this is somebody who is usually kind of written off as a little bit too nice, a little bit too caring, somebody that people really think that they can pull the wool over their eyes for. Yeah, and with. And this is a person who's a lot stronger than they think they are, okay? And this is a person who's starting to realize their own strength. And this is you during this time in your career, with your money, this is a person, this is you underestimating yourself. But also, you know that when it comes to what you love, when it comes to what you value, you are absolutely ferocious in protecting it. Now let's see here the people who will be aiding you during this time. Aquarius, September 2020, money and career, Aquarius. September 2020, money and career, Aquarius. September 2020, money and career, Aquarius. Who are the people who will be aiding Aquarius? Who are the people who will be aiding Aquarius? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. All right, these three. And we start here with the Princess of Cups, Water Sign Energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. This is a person who loves truly and deeply and who shares of this wisdom of love, of compassion, and of understanding. And this is a person who really draws you into their heart's truth, who really inspires you in a way that you hadn't anticipated and in a way that opens your heart to yourself. Now know with these people, they do not have to be people that you know in real life. They can be people who inspire you in a myriad of different ways. But this is a person who calls to your heart, who drinks deeply 
deeply of their soul and who shows you that life can be a little bit more beautiful, just fixing my camera for a moment, a little bit more beautiful than you ever really expected it to be. And, it's show, and this person is showing you that the depth of your soul, the beauty of your compassion, and the extent of your personal power is absolutely breathtaking. And it, this person is telling you to kind of embrace yourself more than you have been because you have a tendency to write your truth off as silliness, to sit there and say, oh, I'm just being too sensitive. And the fact of the matter is, no, Aquarius, you are connected. You're connected to this world and this time and this age in a way that is really quite spectacular. You are showing people that there is more to life, more to life than they expected, more to life than they had thought possible. And as you embrace this energy of the Princess of Cups, you have the Queen of Pentacles. This brings richness into your life. This is a person whose vibrational energy really matches yours. And you're going to sit there and think, we're really quite different people, and yet I feel drawn to them. You know, there might not be a reason for this, but it is a power of my soul and myself, and it is a power that is moving me. This is an earth sign energy, a Taurus, a Virgo, a Capricorn. This is a person who is very, you know, kind of feet planted in the ground, very, very much a logical, you know, factual, step-by-step -step sort of person. This is also a person who embraces a sensuality with this earthly plane that you're going to find entirely en enchanting and entrancing. Now, it doesn't have to be a sexuality or a sensuality that is very sexual, but it is a sensuality that is very elegant and eloquent. It is a sensuality that is astoundingly beautiful, and it does lift a burden of understanding from your shoulders. It's like you thought you, this had to be figured out more, and you realize that it's simply a part of being, and it leads to a more prosperous way of life with money or something you value as much as money. It leads to a grounding and a rooting. This is a person who is more comfortable behind the scenes, as is the, the Princess of Cups. They're much more comfortable behind the scenes. They don't have to be in the center of attention. And they would be people that when like the attention starts to be a little bit too much on them, they actually start to retreat, which is, which is kind of beautiful, especially in this world. And then Aquarius, you have, of course, you showing up. You have Aquarius showing up. Now, this could be a fellow Aquarius that you find astoundingly entrancing, you know, brings out the soul's desire and the beauty within you. And this is a person who pours truly and deeply into the waters of this world, into the healing, graceful power of this world, and really ignites us, moves us forward. And then we have here the five of fire. The five of fire is a doubt and a fear. So we start off with a questioning of your own abilities. We start off with a sense of, am I moving forward the right way? Am I doing the right thing? You might even find that you're talking yourself out of things that you really love because you're going to sit there and say, oh, it's stupid. Oh, it's foolish. Oh, I can't believe this. And what it's saying here is to embrace your truth, your honor, and yourself, your beauty, your compassion, and your brilliance, to let yourself move forward in this truth, to stop questioning yourself every single turn of the way, because five is a freedom number, and five is a number of things being resolved much more easily than you think they're going to be. And so as you're moving forward, you're being told to let yourself move forward in the creation of your spirit, in the fire of your passion. Work can be giving you kind of agita, during this time, just a bit of a headache, a bit of a stomach ache. You know, you're, you're worried about things, you're questioning things, you're thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to get to where it is that I want to be? And it can also be that your work is a job. It is a job that you do to put money on the table, to bring money so that you can feed your family, so that you can clothe your family, and so that you can keep things running. And you might be kind of disappointed in yourself because of this. And that's nonsense, Aquarius. Okay, upholding your responsibilities. I am of the firm belief that upholding our responsibilities is one of the reasons that we are, are on this earth. And it's one of the things that grounds us. And we, it might not be sexy, you know, it might not be, you know, something that everybody sits there and goes, oh, wow, that person is an honorable, trustworthy person. That's awesome. Okay, but it is something that divinity looks at, that spirit looks at and greatly values. And so for yourself here, you might have a passion. You might have something on the side that you do. And it can become a career. It really can. 
but you have to give it time to grow and you have to stop doubting yourself and you have to let yourself have the freedom to be able to be. And even if it's just five minutes a day that you designate to something that you truly love, it is five minutes of bliss. It's five minutes of joy that ignite the soul and move yourself in a grounding, in a cleansing, in a brilliance that lets you be the knight of sorts because the messenger of air is the knight of sorts. And this is you in the minor arcana. This is you moving forward in knowledge, in wisdom, in truth, in understanding. This is also you being a bit rash, okay? So the knight of swords and all us air signs, I myself am a Gemini energy. So all us air signs, I definitely relate. We tend to think, okay, I got it. I'm just going to go. Now, sometimes it works out brilliantly because you just have to jump because if you don't jump, you'll totally psych yourself out. But other times, and a lot of times, you have to jump but also have knowledge backing you. And this is what you need here, Aquarius. You need this knowledge backing you so that as you jump, you don't jump completely blind. Now, it can be a little bit of knowledge that grows and grows over time, but it is the knowledge that is needed. And so here, with the Knight of Swords, you're going to find that internally, as you're having these doubts, you're going to think, oh, I just need to stop this. I need to stop mucking about, and I need to move forward. And you're going to go, you're going to go after what it is that you desire. And just make sure that you keep yourself grounded, that you don't sit there and start to question everything about you, and then really pull yourself away from your life purpose. Keep yourself in your life purpose. Keep yourself visualizing your past, your past, no, your path, while you are honoring your past and using the knowledge from your past to move yourself forward. And as you do so, you move into an awakening and you move into an awakening while screaming your truth. And that's what you're doing here. I very much see kind of a brave heart thing going on where you're charging into battle and you're screaming your war cry. And the Celts used to do this because it absolutely terrified their foes, especially the Romans. When the Romans came in, they all lined up nice and neatly and were very serious about the whole thing. They thought the Celts were the scariest things that they had ever, ever, ever encountered. And that's going to be your energy here. The kind of ferocity, the you know, the, the power, the truth, and that's going to be what propels you forward. And that's what actually sent, you know, Caesar's army to like scatter away. And that's going to be something that's very brilliant for you. It's actually going to work out really, really well for you, but you walk forward with knowledge and it might scare the other person, but it is your truth and your power. And the wisdom that you hold is a bit scary to other people because it is so in depth and is so powerful. It leads you to your justice. It leads you to your understanding. It leads you to your balance. And this is also saying, be very mindful not to be caught up too much in what is seen as just. And I say just with quotes around it because it's kind of walking so carefully that you're not walking at all, you know, that you're not moving forward. It's kind of like, oh, I don't want to do anything that might offend anyone or yeah because that's a very big thing for you Aquarius you have such a caring compassionate giving heart that you will literally you know not do something in order to keep the balance to keep the peace and this is saying listen somebody somewhere is going to be offended it's just fact you can't please it's the song you know you can't please everyone so you have to please yourself and that is going to be your justice it is remembering to be just to you not simply think of the justice for everybody else. So this is going to be a powerful truth for you, to be just for you, to balance yourself, to keep yourself harmonized as you move forward. And things are not black and white, okay? Black and white is the black print on the white page. It can't all be, you know, bound in a neat little book. Life is filled with the areas of gray, okay? Life is filled with the nooks and the crannies that air gets into, but other, you know, things cannot. So here, it is knowing that the malleability of the mind is so absolutely important. And it's keeping your mind in this state of kind of liquid change and powerful being. It moves you to being ready for this kind of twist and turning time, this change of seasons and this powering of self. It moves you into a greater understanding and it moves you into knowing that yes, at times you feel like you're on a wild and crazy ride, but it is a powerful and beautiful ride. It is an astounding truth and it is an embrace of the heart. And yes, the wheel of fortune 
says all is flux and nothing stays the same. You know, Plato said that. And Plato also said, you know, be kind. Because the person, the stranger that you passed, is going through their own battle. And of course, I'm paraphrasing here. But that is what you're learning from the Wheel of Fortune, is that you're moving forward with love at your center, but you are moving in a change of season, in a flux of time. And as you do so, just simply remember, Aquarius, to bring the power of you to the table, the power of kindness, the power of compassion. And it does not mean that you let that kindness make it so that you are just to everyone but yourself. But you use that kindness so that you are empowered and that you move forward in a truth that is so profound to you that it becomes a living dream, that it becomes a understanding of truth. Because your heart needs to be patient. Your heart has big plans for you, and it just does. And the Seven of Pentacles is saying that, yes, you can pick the fruit. You can. You can pick the fruit off the tree because in the Rider Waite Smith deck, this is a man looking up at the tree with the pentacles on it, and he's waiting for them to become ripe. So think of it as fruit of apples on a tree. And if you don't wait for it to become ripe, yes, you can pick the fruit early, but it doesn't have that same delicious taste. You can cover it with honey, you can cover it with sugar, but it's still always just a bit off, a bit tart, a bit not delicious. But here it's having patience so that when you harvest your crops, so that when you bear your fruit, it's sweet, delicious, and beautiful. It is absolutely profound to you. And it doesn't matter the time. We tend to think as human beings, we tend to give ourselves time frames. And it's like, okay, I will do this by this age. I will do that by that age. And I will be moving forward this way. And we have ourselves on such a time frame. And yet the world is forever changing. You know, all is flux and nothing stays the same. So our time frame kind of goes out the window. And then when, we look, when we're looking at things, we might sit there and be like, oh my gosh, I didn't get that done. I didn't do that. I am a failure. I am a loser. How dare I? This is saying things happen in divine time, not our time. And it's being okay with that. Because when they happen in divine timing, the world is a little sleep sweeter and things are a lot truer. And your heart is learning that and is knowing it. Now, during this time, your heart cannot lie. It can lie, of course, you know, but you are going to find yourself calling yourself out. You are also going to find that you cannot stand being lied to or being lied about. I mean, who can? But during this time, with the repeat of the number seven, it's profoundly important to live in the truth. You're also going to find that if you lie, okay, especially since this is a money and work reading, you will be called out. You will just be called out. You will look at things and you'll be like, okay, wait up because there are three sevens here and you will think, you know what? That person over there, they lied way worse than me. I just bent the truth a little bit. And you know what the person will say to you? We're not talking about them. We're talking about you. Let's keep on the subject. And that is going to boil your blood. I mean, it really is. So here, if you just keep things on the up and up, you come from a place of kindness and compassion and justice to yourself, you're going to find that you really stay on the tried and true path. You're also going to be very, very drawn to the mystical, to the spiritual during this time. And you have the seven of fire. The seven of fire is saying, especially here with it leading to the night of air and then to the six of cups. So here it's, you're, you're fighting a battle and your heart is fighting this battle because in the public arena, in the past, you have been hurt and you're like, never again, absolutely never again. And you are, of course, a warrior. You are a knight during this time. And you're going to kind of want to fight every injustice that comes your way, every negativity, every doubt, every fear. And this is saying, let it go. As my great grandma would always say, you cannot, don't step on every stone. You'll never get to the other side. You know, if you're crossing a river, don't step on every stone. You'll never get to the other side. And this is a river of our emotions, of our truth, and of our passion. Do not step on every stone because you will find that it takes you an eternity to get to where you want to be. This isn't saying to be a rug. This isn't saying to let people walk all over you. This is saying stay in your truth, you know, uphold your passion, uphold your desire, but do not, do not go to battle with everyone who doubts you, with everyone who questions, because some people are just fools 
And some people are just so innately different from you that they will never see what you are working towards and your goals. They won't make any sense to them. And why are you trying to convince someone who isn't even reading from the same book as you? And that book might not even be in the same language as the book that you are reading. Their story is completely different. Let them have theirs. You have yours. It's beautiful and it is profound. You are connecting here, back to back. You have your mind and your heart coming forward. And this is the night of water. The night of water is getting ideas and, you know, guidance from a small and unlikely source. Meaning that everybody thinks things happen, have to happen hugely. I mean, that's just what we think. We're thinking, oh my gosh, the bigger, the better. But sometimes it is something that most people would completely overlook that changes the course of our lives. I remember when I started doing the tarot, right? And I was doing it kind of conventionally like everybody else does. And I do know now I am quite different, but I started doing it differently. And I thought, oh my gosh, everybody's going to hate this. And nobody's going to like the messages the Spirit is bringing through me. And I remember this one man, he commented, and he was an older gentleman. And he said to me, Dane, thank you so much. This is the first time anybody has ever said anything nice to me, ever told me that I could do it. And I get emotional because he changed the whole trajectory of my life. It was the smallest comment. And it made the biggest difference. And that is your truth right there. It is the smallest thing that makes the biggest difference, that touches your soul and your heart and yourself in a way that is beyond profound. It is life-changing. And it moves you forward slowly. The Knight of Cups is the second slowest moving night. And you are going to find that, yes, it's a slow go. The way of the heart is usually slow. The way of the mind, we can work things out a little bit quicker. But when it comes to emotions and feelings and self and essence, it's a little bit slower. And it's a little bit steadier as we walk in this kind of understanding of ourselves. And we can turn away from who we are and move more quickly into an accepted way of being. But if you're staying true to you, Aquarius, it's a slower go. It's a slower go to live a life that is a symphony of love for yourself especially when it comes to money and career. This right here, this knowledge, this understanding, this heart's truth, it leads you to the four of earth. And the four of earth is walking away from vampiric energy, from the energy that drains you, from a feeling like you have to hold on to the money, to the prosperity that makes you who you are. A feeling, feeling like it's a fight every single step of the way, because it's not. And you are purging yourself of this vampiric energy. Now you might be able to pull up instantaneously who this vampiric energy is from or how this vampiric energy comes into your life. Aquarius, for you, it would be an idea that the dreams are too big. It would be an idea that you are too sensitive and it's the people who put those seeds of doubt into your mind, okay? That what you are interested in really isn't worth anything. And as you face these lies, you start to free yourself. And you do. Your energy starts to become yours and not simply drained and becoming a fight. So here, I highly recommend you see yourself surrounded by the golden light of spirit. And you see your angels. Visualize them as seraphim. I love the seraphim because they have the flaming wings. And I always thought that was the coolest thing. And they have a flaming sword, right? And they cut through the light of the universe that is around you. And for a moment, for an instant, there is nothing but darkness and quiet in yourself. And then the universal light comes back around you. But this time it doesn't have the impurities that come through living. All right? Do this, do this twice a day. When you wake up in the morning and when you go to sleep at night. Strengthen your energy. Strengthen yourself. Okay? Ward off this vampiric energy. Because you are such an innately giving person that people will want to drain away your wealth, drain away your happiness, because they think, why not me? Why you? What makes you deserving of this? Why not me? And it leads you in the public arena to a rebirth, to a dying away of the old self and a rebirth of the new, a channeling of your passion, your desire, your hopes, your dreams, and your purpose. This is a Scorpio energy, 
October 23rd to November 21st. And the way I see Scorpio energy is that these are people who live in the in-between. They live in the world between spirit, the spirit world, and the earthly world. And I think that is so utterly cool. They are also people who yeah, do not stick around when they know nothing will come of it. And that's why Scorpios can be seen as being rather aloof, but that's because they size things up rather quickly, and whether they are right or they are wrong, they are right for them, and they walk away. And so here, with the Scorpio energy, you are finding a dying away of the old self, a rebirth of the new, a being able to kind of sum things up rather well, and a moving in your truth, and it does not matter if other people understand it. This is also a great equalizer. Death is the greatest equalizer, right? It's where everybody ends up, no matter how much we fear it. And I can talk rather cavalierly about, about death because I experienced great loss when I was really little. And so it is something that has always touched my life in a very profound way. And it's something that I always know is there. And so here, with this, this death card, it isn't to make you afraid. It is to simply say that there's, there's a poem. And it says, six feet of earth make us all of one size. And I love it. I was reading, you know, some of the comments. And one person said, death is the, what is it? A grave digger is the only job where you start at the top and you work your way down. And here, that's the truth. You know, you are digging through things that just aren't relevant to you. And you are embracing a deeper truth and a deeper understanding and a deeper power and a deeper meaning. And it can seem like you're working your way down. You're working your way through the muck and the mire of things, but you're working your way towards the truth, the passion, and the understanding. And it balances things for you. It makes things more real, but also more understandable. And it leads you to the Six of Cups, something from your past. And this could be, you know, this could be when you were really little. And it's a pain, it's a hurt, it's a negativity that is spoken over you. And it makes you doubt. It makes you think, oh, I just can't do that. You know, and this is in your public arena. So you're having this dying away of the old self, this rebirth of the new, this stepping into your power, your passion, your ferocity. And you're going to see that there are lies that you were told. And they might not have been lies when they were told to you. This could have been literally how the person who raised you or the people who taught you or the people around you saw the world. But it was their eyes, not yours. And it colored your vision. And it led to a doubt and to a fear and to an apprehension and to a pain that you have carried with you. This could be inherited through your DNA. This could be, you know, we've always been like this type of mentality. Or this could also be inherited through your past lives where this is a burden that you have to to see, to work through. And it isn't something that you need to fight. It's something that you need to love yourself enough to say, no, this is no longer my truth. And I am no longer stuck to the past. And as you do so, you embrace the lovers. You embrace a duality of spirit. You embrace love and passion, truth and understanding. Now, the drawback with the lovers, with a Gemini energy, is that they tend to be people pleasers. Okay, As much as their, their truth is to kind of ascend from people pleasing to being their own person, they have a hard time with people pleasing. And so here, you're going to find that you have a hard time with people pleasing. You see that as a way of showing love, as keeping the peace, as moving things forward. And this is something where you're saying, you know what, no more. No more do I swallow my voice to make peace. No more do I doubt myself to be able to live somebody else's truth. And you move forward in a love for your life, in a love of creation of your existence. And this is something that's going to be very powerful in the public arena because it is what you are fighting for. It is the justice and it is the inspiration that speaks to your heart, so it speaks to your very soul and lets you be a warrior for yourself. And it brings you to the Eight of Water. And the Eight of Water, as Spirit said before, is an astoundingly powerful card. It is a card that is a walking away. It's very much like the Death card, okay, in the Major Arcana. It very much follows that pattern. It's actually my minor arcana death card. It is a dying away of the old self, a rebirth of the new. It is a walking away from something you once thought you would love because it no longer fits. It's that really pretty pair of shoes 
that are torture to wear. It is something that cannot carry you, that cannot protect you, and isn't doing its end of the bargain. So why are you still there? This could be a way of thinking. This could be a person in your life. This could be a job that you have, that every day you go to it, it's like dying just a little bit more. And we've all been there. I mean, believe you me, I absolutely have been there. And this is the courage to say, that's not me. And this is the courage to take that chance on yourself. Because as you do, and as you move forward in a knowledge and in a truth that is yours, you see that no one and nothing can stop your heart. And that is what you have thought of as one of your weaknesses. You've thought, oh, I'm just too caring. I'm just, you know, too much of a sucker. And this is like, no, that is your greatest strength, Aquarius. That is why you can achieve your highest form of perfection. But you have to believe in yourself. And this is being a warrior. This is being fierce. This is being fearless. And this is moving forward in passion, in desire, in truth, and in understanding. And here, nothing stands in your way. Nothing stands in your way once you put your mind to it. Now let's go deeper. Aquarius, September 2020, money and career. Show me more deeply for Aquarius, September 2020, money and career. Show me more deeply for Aquarius, September 2020, money and career. Oh, goodness. <laughs> They're all flying all over the place. Okay. And that's how you can feel things are during this time. It's kind of like everything is changing. Everything is so much more intense, so much more than you had thought it was going to be. But it's almost, and it's also so much more powerful. It's almost like divinity is saying it's time for you to fly in the face of your truth, in the face of your destiny. So let's see here. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Okay. And, oh, goodness. One bonus card right there. Okay. And let's see the people you are to be mindful of during this time. Who are the people Aquarius is to be mindful of? September 2020, money and career. Who are the people Aquarius is to be mindful of? September 2020, money and career. Angels and spirit guides, show me deeply. Guide this reading and show me clearly. All right. So we have here, we have the Princess of Wands. This is fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. This is somebody who's very young or has a very youthful energy around them. And this is somebody who acts without thinking, who is hot-headed and rather impetuous. And this is somebody who can really, they have a way of really enticing people to them. They have this charisma, but they don't have the knowledge or the follow-through. And you're going to sit there and be doubting yourself and being like, well, why don't I see them as, as brilliant as everybody else does? It's because they're selling, they're selling sand. They're selling not, they're not literally selling, but they could be, they could be, but they're promising too much and they don't have the follow through. And that's going to be something that is, that makes you question things. Okay. Yeah. The moon card. This is a Pisces energy, February 19th to March 20th. This is fear. This is somebody, they do, these people do not have to be, you know, fire sign energies, air sign energies, water sign energies. The, or, you know, a Pisces. This is a person who really embraces this Pisces energy. And this is a person who really is rather doom and gloom. Because the thing with Pisces is if they can conquer the fears and the shadows, they can conquer anything in life. But conquering that is astoundingly hard. All right? So here, it is a sense of the shadows becoming overwhelming. It is a sense of fear becoming almost an enticing way to be. Because it's rather like, it's rather like almost, a spirit is saying a cop-out. I think that's rather rude, but it's almost as if it's kind of like, 
it's not that I'm too afraid. It's that it is too much to begin with, you know? But it really does boil down to fear. And it is being too afraid. And you're going to find this person very much feeding off of the shadows, feeding off of fear. And it's going to diminish you instead of replenishing you, instead of making you feel stronger and stand taller within this world. It's going to make you feel smaller and feel more overwhelmed. So be, just be very mindful of this energy, Aquarius, because they're going to speak to some really deep truths and some really serious things. But instead of walking away from it, feeling like, oh, okay, I know how to handle the fear, they're going to make you feel like the fear is sitting on your chest, keeping you from moving forward. And remember, fear is what kept our ancestors alive. And in our modern world, it is kind of very hard to incorporate the way that we have evolved with fear to, to keep us alive, to keep us vigilant, and for us to know that, oh, okay, I don't have to worry about being eaten by a wild animal. You know, this is more an anxiety of how, you know, social media thinks of me. And this is more anxiety over, you know, politics and work. And so here it becomes a much more kind of visceral thing, a much more real thing than being able to step back and say, it's not life or death. Okay. And that's going to be a powerful thing to understand. And then you have the Prince of Cups, Water Sign Energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. This is somebody who moves very slowly, very steadily within emotions. And this is somebody who really stews in their own emotions. They bring a little bit too much drama, a little bit too much trauma to the table. So you have a negative Prince of Cups, too much drama with a positive Prince of Cups, which is a, po a person who moves slowly and steadily in their emotional truth and who gets wisdom from the most unlikely places. You have temperance right here. This is a Sagittarius energy, a time frame November 22nd to December 21st. You have the page of inspiration, fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Strength card, again, this is all fire sign energy right here. This is a Leo energy. This is July 23rd to August 22nd. Your inner self is astoundingly passionate, astoundingly driven. Okay. Three of emotions. You've known pain. This has been from people who are supposed to protect you, who were supposed to be your people, especially growing up. And these were people who just couldn't. And you internalized it and you said there is something more wrong with me, which Aquarius is usually the way you handle things. You will take it and you will put it upon your shoulders. And if it was something you could change, you would. Okay. But here, that was somebody else's story. That was their negative narrative and they put it onto you and they gave you scars. They gave you scars where your world was small. Okay. When your world was them and it was you and it was, you know, Sesame street, you know? So here it is, it is a walking away. It is a walking away from people who were supposed to be in your circle who betrayed you. And it is a connecting with the people who have always been there with you and who help you move forward. This leads you to a 10 of emotions. This is, and they all live happily ever after. This is beauty and prosperity and emotional truth. And then you have the two of inspirations, the two of wands. You start to see the world open up to you as you move forward this way. Then you have the magician. You are taking your power. You are standing before the altar of your existence and you are claiming it. You have the lovers on top of the lovers. Very strong Gemini energy here. This is, again, a time frame, May 21st to June 20th. This is moving forward in love, and it brings you the sun. It brings you prosperity and beauty, and in the public arena, people become super jealous because you are moving forward in a way that is breathtaking. And they see it. It radiates from you. And then you have the six of inspiration. This is celebrating yourself. This is moving forward. I love how it's on top of the seven, the, the chariot, and then it counts down to the six. It's like, yes, now it is time. As you see that you move forward in love and passion and beauty, it's time to celebrate yourself. Sagittarius energy right here. Okay. This is a connecting with people. This is a sharing of information. This is a diving deep. And with the air of, of knights right here, the, what is it? The knight of swords. That's it. This is you moving very quickly and very powerfully forward in knowledge, in truth, in passion, and in wisdom that is right for you. And you are gathering to yourself what is sacredly important. And as you do so, you are becoming a student 
of your passion, your inspirations, your fire, your truth, your desires. And you are finding that you are stronger than you ever thought you were because you are realizing that strength is not brute force strength. It's not being able to force people to do what they want to, to do what you want them to do. But it is the kindness of your soul. It is the depth of your compassion. It is the loyalty that you bring forward in people. And you have loyalty around you. If it is from no other than your spirit guides and your angels, that is loyalty that is absolutely priceless. It leads you to the three of emotions. It leads you from moving away from the doubt and the fear that was spoken over you, from the hurts and the betrayals, and saying, this is not how I am you know, categorizing my life. I am moving towards something more. And it helps you embrace your love. It helps you embrace what you desire. And it helps you to grow, knowing that in the end, you have to be able to rely on yourself. And it sounds rather harsh to say, but there is one person who is always with you, from birth to death, and it is you. And so, yes, it is nice to have other people to lean on. But here it is knowing that your strength is in your power, in your resources, and in your understanding. It leads you to the ten of emotions. It leads you to a happily ever after, a beauty, a prosperity of soul, a brilliance of truth, and a laughter of self. It leads you to joy, and it leads you to a joy that permeates deep down into the very essence of yourself. And it lets you see that the world is more open to you than you had realized. And you start to see that you hold the world in your hand, that it is smaller and faster and so much more than you had thought it was. It leads you to being a magician. It leads you to harnessing the magic of the four elements of the essence of creation. And it leads you to know that as above, so below. As you think it, so you become. As you are reborn and as you alleviate the hurts, the pains, and the manipulative emotions of the past, you move forward in the magic of the present. As above, so below. As you think it, so it becomes. Now you see yourself really starting to connect with alchemists. And alchemists are, you know, the people who try to turn lead into gold. And yes, you can sit there and say, okay, you can't turn lead into gold. But if you see it as a spiritual truth, as you see it, if you see it as you are turning a normal human into somebody who is priceless, somebody who radiates with brilliance, somebody who is profoundly and authentically true to themselves, then they have taken something every day and turned it, turned themselves into something priceless. And it leads you to being in love, in love with the duality of yourself, in love with the highs and the lows and the lefts and the rights, in love with you and embracing that love and embracing that essence of truth. And it brings you, it brings you to a radiance. It brings you to a radiance that everybody sees. And here, with the sun, people get jealous. And people want to take that light away from you because they think, why not me? Because they haven't done the work that you have. They haven't been on the journey that you have been on. Shine brightly. Shine brightly and embrace your success. Because in the public arena, when it comes to your money, when it comes to your career, you are shining with success because you are walking away from what has held you back, what has been the anchor around your neck. And it leads you to a celebration of yourself. It leads you to a beauty and an essence and a joy of simply being you. It leads you to being that boss, that person who celebrates the people around them, the person that people want to work for, instead of the person who brings other people down, who makes them afraid, who you know makes them doubt themselves. Now, what boss are you for your life, yourself, and your soul? You are the boss who celebrates, and that is how you are ruling your life. Your spirit animal message during this time. Aquarius, September 2020, money and career. Aquarius, September 2020, money and career. Aquarius, September 2020, money and career. Aquarius. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Okay, these three. We have right here the bat spirit. A rebirth is assured. And we see that 
with the death card right here. And a, a rebirth is assured. You are being reborn. And as you are reborn, you're moving forward in the sounds and in the essence of this world. And tonight, I just actually saw a bat flying in the sky. And that's exactly where my mind went to. And it almost seemed as if the, the bat was flying rather erratically, but it wasn't because it was catching the bugs. It was feeding itself. It was nourishing itself. It was reborn within the night, within the shadows, where other people cannot see clearly. And so that is going to be you. That is where your rebirth is. It is where other people cannot see clearly, but where you know your truth. And though it might seem like erratic flying to those who are looking on, it is profound flying for you. It is soaring. And then we have the wombat spirit. Be at home. Be at home with yourself, your essence, and your soul. It leads you to the dragonfly spirit. Truth transcends illusions. The truth of your soul transcends the illusions of this world. Your subconscious spirit animal message. Is the flamingo spirit? Embrace the in-between. Embrace the in-between. Because there is more to this earth than we could imagine. What is the saying? There is more to heaven and hell than we could possibly dream of. And here is the truth. Also be very mindful of the energy that you take in because it really does permeate out of you. You radiate with it. Because remember, flamingos are, are white birds, but because of the fish that they eat, it turns them pink. So the energy that you take in changes the essence that you shine out as. The essence that shines out from you. There we go. That's better word. We have the Prince of Swords coming through. You are the Prince of Swords during this time, the Knight of Swords. You are the person who charges forward, who knows their mind, who knows their passion, who knows themselves. And this is the essence that you are embracing. Just don't be too rash. It leads you to your subconscious chakra message, which is angels and masters. It is your angels and your spirit guides wrapping their wings around you. It is divinity guiding you forward. This is the soul star chakra located six inches above your crowns. And this is your angels saying, I have you. I'm guiding you. Listen to me. Listen to the beauty that surrounds you and the essence that is moving you forward. Your subconscious tarot message is the two of water. This is healing, beautiful love. This is the essence of soul and the power of self. This is the minor arcana lover's card. This is love that heals, that transcends, and that evolves. And your subconscious tarot message. Going deeper from the two of cups with love is justice, Libra energy. This is love, this is healing that is just and kind for you. It does not have to be understood by anyone else. It leads to a rebirth. It leads to an empowering. All right, Aquarius. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all, and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a banishing of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy, and a moving forward, knowing that we are uniquely blessed because there is no one else in the world quite like us. Moving forward in a power and a comprehension of self, a visualization of our life purpose, of our dreams, and not writing them away, saying, oh my gosh, this is too silly, but saying, this is me, and I have a right to live the life that shines deeply within my soul. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you.
May you move forward in peace and harmony, Aquarius.